You want to build a FPV drone but don't know what components you need? You want to fly freestyle, cinematic or races, batteries with 4S or 6S, use the Crossfire system or ELRS, digital or analog video signal, what software I'm going to use for the flight controller and what frame I'm going to use. If you got as many questions as I when I started with the FPV hobby, then this video is the right one for you. There are many things you need to know before buying parts for your FPV drone based on what you want to use the drone for. This video will explain everything as simple as possible so you get a good understanding of how a FPV drone works and you know what to buy. Okay, so I'm going to start with the batteries. The batteries will power up your drone and are one of the most important parts. So don't skip this part unless you want to set your house on fire. I would say 90% of all batteries are LiPo batteries, aka lithium polymer batteries. They are an incredible power source and yeah, that's also a reason why you should be very careful and need to select the right battery for your choice. But don't panic, I will explain everything you need to know to choose the right battery. So when choosing LiPo batteries, always opt for serious brands to ensure the performance and value. The most common brands are listed here so you get a small picture of what brands are serious. If you want the top of the notch batteries, I would choose the Tattoo Airline because they are the smallest and lightest ones and perfect for FPS FPV drones where every gram counts. But if you fly cinematic or freestyle, I would choose every other brand like these Tattoo Fun Flies right here. But I beg you, please don't save money on batteries. So now you know what brand you can choose. But there are three more important steps you need to do before choosing the right battery. A LiPo battery is designed to operate in a specific voltage range that is typically between 3.5 volt and 4.2 volt. Over charging a lipo battery above 4.2 volt is dangerous and may lead to fire also discharging the lipo under 3 volt may result in battery damage so stop flying when the battery reaches 3.5 volt per cell to extend its lifespan and also uh, unlike your cell phone you can not just fly the battery until it's quite empty lipo batteries may have multiple cells the s rating on the battery refers to the number of cells so this 4s lipo right here got one, two, three, four cells. And this 6S LiPo right here got one, two, three, four, five, six cells. Battery voltage directly affects motor speed. So using a higher cell rated battery can increase the power of your drone. However, adding more cells makes the battery heavier and also more expensive. So remember this when you purchase your next LiPo. The capacity of a LiPo battery is measured in milliamp hours. So the capacity of a LiPo battery measured in milliamp hours indicates how much current you can draw from your battery for an hour until it's empty. Increasing the capacity may result in longer flight times, but also remember it gets way heavier and yeah, you need to find a good balance. The last important thing you need to know is the C rating. It's not recommended to use a higher current than specified with the C rating as the battery can overheat and also shorten its lifespan or even catch fire. A higher C rating offers better performance, especially good for power hungry drones. But if you fly a low power cruiser, for example, a higher C rating is not really necessary and also just adds more weight and and you got less flight time. So really find the balance between a good capacity, C rating and also the cell count. It's all about using the right tool for the right job. Okay, so before we are going to have a look to the electronic parts of your drone, we are going to talk about the motors. There are two important things you need to know for buying the right motors for your FPV drone. Starting at the right motor size. So you got a four digit number that indicates the length and weight of your motor. The first two numbers represent the stator width and the other two represent the stator height. So if we take this motor right here, we got a 2207 motor. That means we got 22 millimeters in width and seven millimeters in height. The other important thing you need to think about is the KV number. This indicates the number of revolutions per minute, AKA RPM, 
that a motor turns when one volt is applied without any propellers attached to the motor. So if you have a look at the Cinelog 20 right here, we got a kV number of 5500 kV because the props are smaller and the motors need to spin faster to keep the drone in the air. Bigger drones like the racing drones, this 5 inch drone right here, got bigger props and don't need high KV numbers. This actually got 1800 KV because yeah, the props are bigger and the motors don't need to spin fast to keep the drone in the air. You also need props for your drone. I will keep this short because there's not much to say about but if you got uh, bigger drones you typically choose free blade props and if you got smaller drones like under 3.5 inch or lower you choose four blade props and the only important thing you need to know about props is the indicated number of the propeller specification so the first number is for the length of the prop the second one for the pitch and the last one for the number of blades you got if we take this five inch prop right here we got a length of 5.1 inch and a pitch of four and also yeah three blades of course i think the length is self-explaining for a prop because if you got a two inch drone you can't just screw a five inch prop on but the pitch is really important if you take higher pitch props you got a more aggressive and faster flight style this would be perfect for a racing drone but keep in mind that the battery will run out faster lower pitch props like this one right here are a little bit slower but they are more battery efficient and are perfect for cinematic flights or even freestyling so now comes the nerdy part we are going to talk about the esc aka electronic speed controller but what does a ESC? Really simple explained, the ESC is responsible for controlling the four motors of your drone and also supply it with power. You just connect your battery with a XD60 plug, this is this one right here, and your drone got power. But how do you know what ESC you should buy? There are two important things you should know. Firstly, ensure that the ESC is capable of the cell count of your battery. So this ESC from GAPRC right here can handle three up to six S LiPos. The second thing you should know about your ESC is the maximum continuous current you can draw from your ESC for each motor. As we take our example with the GAPRC ESC, we can get a maximum continuous current of 60 amps for each individual motor. So your motor should be rated lower than 60 amps otherwise you will damage your esc or even burn it up you can get the maximum amps of your motor of choice within the specific data sheet let's have a look at a little example so you get a better understanding if we take the xing 2 2207 with 1855 kv we can see in the data sheet that one motor can draw a max current of 35.08 amps for 60 seconds so let's add a small buffer and the recommend esc you should choose for this specific motor should be a 40 amp esc or higher if you don't care about how much the esc should cost so now comes the big electronic part that is the heart of your FPV drone and also controls everything. After this I will talk about three more important parts you should know about before you are an FPV expert and know what to choose. Also if you watched the video so far, I would be happy about a follow or a like to support me turning my hobby into a profession. So the heart of a FPV drone is the flight controller aka FC. The main task of your flight controller is to stabilize your drone. That's all done by a gyro sensor on your electronic board and also you can do electronic flight maneuvers thanks to your flight controller and it's feeding the drone pilot with important information. The most common software you can find on a flight controller is called Betaflight because it's an open source project and yeah, the FPV community is continuously improving it. I'm using Betaflight 2 because yeah, it's really simple to set up your drone you just connect a USB-C cable to the flight controller board 
and you're good to go. Explaining beta flight would take far too long because it's a whole new world. If you want a full guide and have any specific questions for beta flight, what you want to know, then yeah, just send me a DM on Instagram or leave a comment down below. To purchase the right flight controller, you need to know one important thing. The processor. A flight controller uses microcontrollers to store firmware codes and also do complex calculations for your flight maneuvers. There are two different types of microcontrollers you can buy for your flight controller, the F4 and the F7. The big difference between both is the calculation speed. So you got on the F4 a speed of 168 MHz while the F7 processor got 216 MHz. If you want to save some money just buy a F4 uh, flight controller if you do some more cinematic moves and just want to film with your GoPro for example. But if you want to fly races or do some crazy moves with your freestyle drone, then I would recommend a F7 because yeah, in the future there will be updates where you need complex calculations. Yeah, and it's just safer. So now we are going to talk about the receiver. It's responsible to receive your stick inputs from your radio controller and yeah, just send it to the flight controller. After processing the data, the ESC will change the motor speeds and yeah, just do the flight maneuvers you want to. The first thing you need to know is that there is a big variation of uh, protocols the receiver can talk. There are two different protocols that are very popular. That's called Crossfire and ELRS. I'm using Crossfire because ELRS is a newer transmission protocol and yeah, did not exist when I bought my first receiver. Both are very similar, but ELRS is an open source project like again Betaflight. That's the reason why it's cheaper. The good thing is that yeah, both systems are very easy to bind and connect with your radio controller and also in addition you get a really good range over several kilometers and yeah both are low latency that means you get a really fast response from your sticks to the drone. So this is the last electronic component we are going to talk about. The camera and the video signal aka VTX. The camera records the image and yeah, sends it to the VTX to transmit it to your goggles. There are two different types of FPV video signals you can choose. Analog or digital. Analog is the oldest FPV system and got low latency, best for flying FPV races. And as you can see here, the video quality is worse than that of a retro television. In addition, you normally have a short range because you have to deal with a lot with interferences, for example, with radio masts. So I recommend using digital for all purposes, but if you want to fly racing, you should take analog. Flying digital is quite expensive, but trust me, it's real worth it. You get a crystal clear image and you were able to feel like you're sitting in the drone. The best FPV system I know and I would recommend is from DJI. The O3R unit is a unit that includes video transmission and camera and can also record during your flight in 4K. It's a reliable system with more robustness against any interferences and also got a really great long range transmission. And last but not least, we are going to talk about FPV frames. They are made out of carbon fiber plates and also metal hardware to be as light as possible and robust enough. Most frames have similar shape and construction, but there are slightly differences between each frame. And the most important thing you should know about is the frame size of your drone. So the bigger you choose your frame, the more money you will spend on the motors, the battery and the ESC. It depends really on the intent use. If you want to fly outdoor, I would recommend to buy a 5 inch frame size for cinematic, racing and freestyle. If you want to fly long range over several kilometers, I would recommend a 7 or 10 inch frame. For indoor, I would recommend choosing a frame size under 3 inch like this Cinelog 20 right here with two inches. So now you know what FPV parts are typically in a drone. And also I hope it's easier for you to find the right 
components for your build. It can be very overwhelming because there are so many parts for the same purpose, but this variety makes the FPV hobby apart from others and I'm glad you want to join the FPV world. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day and fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.